Hey everyone, this is Baylor with Baylor Breaks It Down, and in part one of creating our GraphQL server from scratch, we're going to take a look at the scaffolded project that I've created for us all to use, and what we have are just two projects. We have an empty web API project. I don't know if it's API, it's just an empty web project, and we have a data project. And so the data project has in the framework, I've gone ahead and added a mock, or it's not a mock, it's a DB context that has two repositories because we only have two entities that we're actually working with in this application. I've configured this everything here so that it should be pretty straightforward to use. All you need to do is have SQL Server running and you'll go into this data project and you will say, um, it'll look like this. We'll hop into terminal and we're going to go into that source data project. Uh, that is where we are here, and for this, what we would say is .NET EF database update, and then we pass in dash s. That specifies our startup project, and we're going to go back up directory to API, which is this one. And what this will do is it'll go through it and run the migrations that are found inside of this folder, and it will configure that with this design time factory that is in our API project. And so we're doing it this way so that we can have our app settings configured in one place and it'll apply to both projects equally. So once you have your database and you run this, then you'll be good to go. So we'll just take a look at what we have inside of this database since I've now updated your database and you haven't seen what it created is just two or three entities, two or three, it doesn't really matter. We don't really use bicycle part directly. We really only care about bicycle and part. And so both of these entities are very simple. They are basically identical, but they both inherit from iProduct, which gives us an interface so that, which I've de-entered this by accident, which gives us a way so that when we're in our graphical schema, we'll be able to use an interface to wrap both of these. And so that's that. And then I'll just tell you really quickly, I've created a repository for this. This repository, um, since we're not using dbset directly, we've wrapped it with this repository. Uh, it's a generic class that will take a db context and then figure out the dbset based on that entity or type that gets passed in. And this gives us ways to find by ID, do insertions, updates, and deletes. So now we have a data project. We'll just take a look. This API project, like I said, it's an, it's an empty project. I've gone ahead and just done a few things. I've registered our DB context in our configure services method. Uh, be sure to note that I've changed the return type from void to, or I guess that would be no return type to I service provider. I did this because we use middleware down here. And if we don't have a service provider returned, then at this point right here, we won't actually have access to any of the registered services here. So that's an important change. But yeah, all we did here is just register our DB context use SQL Server. And then finally, we're going into configure our application. We're registering middleware that's our C data middleware. And this is super simple. I just threw this together quickly so that we can take in our DB context. We can make sure that we're on our seed path. We pass or protect it really lazily, <laughs> not the best way, but perfect for debugging seed data and then we just go through and create 75 parts and we combine those with 25 products and when we create our bicycles and we create those bicycles we just link them with a random number of parts so this will get us started to actually have data it'll also give us a database to work with and so the next video will take these entities and turn them into graphql objects